Good morning, good evening, NGM. Welcome to the Magpie Next Weekly Podcast, hosted by your sincerely Tim. This podcast is recorded live on LinkedIn audio events and Twitter Spaces, and will be uploaded to YouTube and Spotify. So if you are listening to this, don't worry if you miss an episode. But do remember to follow at Magpie Next on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. For those of you who are new to this channel, Magpie Next is a platform created to discover the next big thing in technology. In this podcast, we bring you the latest news and trends in the world of technology in the past week, and explore its impact on various industries and keep you informed about what you should know. Before we begin, please note our standard disclaimer: the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of his employer. The information shared on this podcast is for educational and entertaining purposes only, and should not be construed as professional advice, financial advice, or recommendations. We are also not responsible for the accuracy of the content shared on this podcast. So, moving on to our first news, which is interestingly not a AI news. Okay, so our first news is related to Web3. So this is definitely not financial advice. But I think in the past week, one of the biggest news. Was the launch of the World Coin? Okay, for those of you who are in Web3, who are into cryptocurrency and things like that, you must have heard of this, and you must have heard of scanning your retina to get cryptocurrency. So, what is this about? So, during last week, what happened is that Bloomberg Crypto. So,、uh, if you go to Bloomberg's website, you can subscribe to a newsletter called Bloomberg Crypto. If you're into cryptocurrencies, Web3, what they did is that they sent an email in the newsletter. Which is called World Coin is more than meets the eye. Okay, so it is about World Coin, which is a coin that was launched last week. And one of the thing about this is, and interestingly, it is about like when we talk about cryptocurrency, people think of speculative reasons, or people think of finance and stuff like that. So there are certain aspects of finance to that, but there's also something that is very unique about this thing, which is digital identity. Okay. And so, what has happened is that there is a launch of this thing called Worldcoin. It is a project from ChatGPT's Sam Altman. Okay, so Sam Altman is the CEO of OpenAI, and then this Worldcoin is actually a project by him. So, in this Bloomberg newsletter, Worldcoin, okay, they say is an iris scanning crypto project de-、uh, developed by Sam Altman's Tools for Humanity. So, Tools for Humanity is the entity behind this Worldcoin, and this Tools for Humanity、uh, for Humanity. Is from Sam Altman, okay, the CEO of the company that developed ChatGPT. So, although it is a kind of like a crypto-related news, there are some correlation with AI, and that is that connection. So, after developing this project for three years,、uh, the project has finally launched. Okay, the venture involves setting up Orb's devices. So, what happened is that there's this Orb thing, which is a physical device, and what it could do is that it can scan people's irises. To prove them that they are people, okay? Because in a world where you have so much、uh, AI-generated content, how do we prove that a person is indeed a person and not an AI-generated content, right? So what they do is that they will scan your iris once, and, and according to them, they do not store anything. And there's a lot of controversy when this thing came out. But then they scan your iris. My understanding is that you then could open like a wallet, which is a crypto Web3 wallet. And then they will send you the world coin, like it's like an edge. And then this world coin, and also on a daily basis, you can do grants where they will pay you、uh, cryptocurrency, so you have some sort of passive income, right? So for very well developed country, the numbers might not be that high, but for、uh, developing countries, I heard that the edge itself is like a week's salary in these developing countries. So it's actually quite interesting. And then there's a huge rate of adoption. What happened is that there was news article mentioning that. The adoption rate, like every second, eight people are being onboarded to this initiative where they scan their irises and then they would get this、uh, Web3 wallet and digital identity and the proof of personhood or a proof of person. So you scan people's irises, provide them with a blockchain-based digital identity card, which is really an interesting concept. Where we talk about、uh, in developing countries or in countries that are very remote, they might not have a very sophisticated I- ID system. It's very hard to For them to maybe go to school, or、um, for them, for people to、uh, do certain things because they do not have an identity. But now this is like a privately owned. So this is not a government sponsored project or whatever, to my understanding. So it's a privately owned project. It's doing this initiative using Web three and crypto and blockchain technology. So to incentivize this adoption, the participant will receive the Worldcoin tokens as a payment. 
which may give the user a say to how the company is run or could evolve in a globally uh, adopted cryptocurrency. So there are news saying that, oh, they are trying to be take over Bitcoin. They're trying to do this and that uh, and to become a new system, payments and digital identity. And this iris scanning feature, it, there's a lot of controversy because iris is like a very personal, close data. And also if you are a fan of Blade Runner, right? The iris is like the window to the soul and it's used to identify whether that entity is a replica or a human being, right? So I think that's an interesting thing, but of course it has some controversy, right? So in just a week of launching this token and seeing people scan, lining up to scan the irises, the previous CEO of Twitter, now X, right? Because Elon Musk renamed the platform, Jack Dorsey tweeted that no, no, at no time should a corporation or state own any part of global financial system, right? Because he sees that, hey, you're trying to onboard a lot of millions and thousands of billions of people uh, on a company or like a private company owned financial system, right? Because there's crypto, you, people can pay and people have their digital identity and it's uh, verified with the IRS scan. And at the same time, Ethereum's uh, Vitalik Buterin uh, was also raising questions in one of his kind of like blog posts that he wrote. According to this Bloomberg article, so we've been talking about this Bloomberg uh, newsletter, sorry, not article, the world token has proven to be a useful tool only for speculators, unfortunately. And the project is uh, facing questions from regulators. Uh, and then according to this uh, newsletter, they say that early backers include FTX co-founder Sam Bankman-Fried, crypto fund Free Hours Capital, has put money into here. And, and the problem with these early investors is that a lot of them went bankrupt. But at the same time, people are joking that say, hey, the best performing portfolio is actually this uh, world coin if you got in early. So three, three hours and FTX is actually having a really best performing portfolio because they invested in here. Right? So that, that's an interesting thing. So interestingly, having raised 500 million today, the project has been reasonably capitalized to absorb any costs on this extra layer of unexpected bureaucracy. But smaller startup wouldn't be so lucky. Uh, this is how uh, the Bloomberg article basically talked about this project. So um, interesting to see how mass adoption for web free technologies is being rolled out in a way like that and that connection of Sam Altman and ChatGPT. So it's not just AI that he's looking at, but he's also looking at the industry of digital identity and also uh, finance. So moving on to our next news, which is AI related, is actually Stable Diffusion launches a new open model that has made some huge advancement in text to image generation. So what happened is that in the last week, Stable AI, Stability AI has released SDXL 1.0, which is an A open model that represents a major advancement in text to image generation model. So this model can now generate high quality images in any style, including photo realism, okay? So it has also an improved ability to interpret simpler language and accurately distinguish between similar terms with different meaning. So this is right now the largest open, okay? So it's open source, right? Open image model. And with a total para parameter count of 10.1 billion, okay? So this is um, an interesting news in the realm of generative AI and also text to image realm, right? So moving on to our next news, this is really interesting. Do you know how many percentage of Americans think AI could spell the end of humanity? So breaking the answer to you, actually 61% of Americans think that AI could spell the end of humanity. So a survey conducted by Ipsos has found that 61% of Americans believe that the fast paced growth of AI could endanger the future of humanity, which is pretty interesting because we were just talking about proof of humanity and now we have humanity being afraid that the future of humanity could be threatened by AI. So, which is three times higher than those who do not hold such concerns. So the Future of Life Institute, or uh, it should an open letter coined for a positive AI research, view the current moment as similar to the beginning of the nuclear era. While some experts such as Jeffrey Hinton emphasize the pressing risk to humanities, others, including Jargon, Lainana, Bill Gates, and Jorgen Skinchabro, disagree with the statement, okay? So it's interesting that people are seeing that the development of AI is uh, like the nuclear era, opening the Pandora box of ushering the nuclear weapons and things like that, which is actually pretty interesting, especially um, during this week, I went to see Oppenheimer, which kind of talks about the conflicts of scientists, whether they should introduce you know, fusion or uh, vision technology and also a nuclear weapons to the world and also all the repercussions afterwards because once you open that Pandora box it's very hard to 
up closer, right? Because you introduce the technology to the world, which people can use maliciously, okay? Which actually translates to our next news, which is there's a new AI tool, and hopefully none of us use that, and this is only for educational purposes only. It's called Thought GPT Emerges, tailored for sophisticated attack. People will say that, oh, AI can write code, AI can do this and that. Chat GPT actually censors certain wording so that you cannot ask it to do malicious things, although some people were able to bypass it using various means. But what happened is that threat actors are now promoting a new AI tool called Fraud GPT on the dark web marketplaces and also on Telegram channels. So this tool is designed for offensive purposes such as spear fishing, quacking tools, and carding, and it's been offered for a subscription cost of $200 a month, okay? If you don't know what the previous terms, the previous terms were actually the different type of mechanisms that people can use to hack, right? To invade certain software and stuff like that. So the tool, this fraud GPT tool, it looks like a chat GPT, but the difference is that it could be used to write malicious code, create undetectable malware, and find leaks and vulnerabilities. So the author claims that there has been over 3,000 confirmed sales and reviews by the exact LLM, which is a large language model, to develop the system is not known. So the development highlights the increasing use of OpenAI's ChatGPT-like AI tools for cyber criminal activities, and organizations are advised to implement a defense in-depth strategy to find and prevent these fast-moving threats. So with these AI tools, some people are now rolling out things that are for malicious purposes. And these are very powerful tools because you can prompt it. You can say, hey, can you help me write a code to hack certain X, Y, Z? And then they write you the code and then you can prompt it again. Oh, can it have certain features and functions and stuff like that? And then it builds on that. Oh, can it be undetectable? And then the AI actually does that, does that for you, right? So it's important for companies or individuals to really find ways to combat that because AI can do all of this live. So in order to defend against these threats, some sort of live process has to be done. But interestingly, safety, we're talking about safety, we're talking about security. Recently, what happened is that OpenAI's head of trust and safety, Dave Wilner, has decided to step down. So Dave Wilner is the former head of trust and safety at OpenAI, has announced that he will be leaving his position and transitioning to an advisory role. This move has raised a lot of concerns, right, about the leadership in addressing trust and safety in the field of generative AI, which is something that we just mentioned that, oh, there are malicious tools, there are hacking tools that have been developed using generative AI. So OpenAI is actively searching for a replacement to manage this trust and safety as the industry faces incoming challenges in ensuring safe and responsible use of AI technology. And interestingly, what happened, right, is that last week, a lot of tech companies came together to discuss about you know, AI safety and security and so on. Oh, so at the same time, this is pretty interesting and the timing is just, just coincident, right? So basically what happened is that OpenAI also quietly shut down the AI detection tool. So what happened is that early this year in January, OpenAI announced an AI detection tool called AI Classifier, right? So this AI classifier was designed to detect whether a piece of content has been created using generative AI, like its own chat GPT. So using this AI classifier, it would de you can send them like a paragraph and say, hey, chat, uh, AI classifier, is this written by chat GPT? And then it will accurately tell you uh, whether it is uh, written by chat GPT or says, oh, I do not know, right? However, this tool was quietly unplugged last week due to its low rate of accuracy. So it shows that AI tools are creating content that is almost close to human. It's so hard to detect whether it's being generated by AI. So OpenAI has stated that it's currently researching more effective provenance techniques for text and has committed to developing and deploying mechanisms that enable users to understand if audio or visual content is AI generated. The need for accurate detection of AI generated text is an important uh, point of discussion for, among educators, right? Who have raised concerns that cons uh, customer uh, students are using chatbots to write essays. So how do we prevent pages, especially when it comes to text, right? But especially when it comes to conversational text, which is actually very difficult, unless you put some clues, right? Every uh, X amount of words, you have a certain words, and that if it uh, comes together like that, then it could pretty much be AI generated. For visual image, audio maybe is easier. There's easier way to add metadata and stuff like that. Even Adobe, if you use Adobe Firefly, generative AI, 
they will have a watermark and they will have some sort of uh, changes to the metadata. Hey, this is actually generated by AI, right? But as these tools become more sophisticated and these open source tools become more sophisticated, how do we tell the difference of what is done by human and what is done by AI? So moving on to the next news, which is about OneRay, okay, image, I mean, text to, uh, image to video, I would say, okay, because OneRay has Gen 1, Gen 2, they can do text to video, they could do image to video. So what happened is that OneRay has announced that it has significantly improved its image to video AI technology in terms of the quality and smoothness of output, and that they have created multiple tools to help create image and video from text description or enhance their image by giving them motion. So in an update launched recently, the company has improved the video generation that uses images as input. So offering significantly better quality control and latency while providing much smoother output video. This improvement is a refinement of an existing feature that has helped eliminate some of the creepy quality looks to footage that has plagued AI generated videos in the past. And this is really interesting because the reason why I found out this news is that on my newsfeed on X, I see a lot of people posting their behind the scene or uh, the workflow of generating AI videos. So what they did is that they say, hey, I went to mid journey and then I used mid journey to generate a image style, like maybe cyberpunk or something like that. And then using that image, they input it to mid journey and then mid journey is able to use that image to give it some motion. And some people were also able to create a video and then capture the last frame, upload it to Midjourney to extend the duration of that video, which is actually pretty interesting. So uh, a lot of these videos has been coming out in the last week. And, uh, and the reason for that is because OneWay has uh, improved the image to video generation process, right? So that's it for this week's episode of Magpie Next Weekly Podcast. We hope you enjoy our discussions on the latest trends and news in the world of technology. Of course, there are other different types of news, but these are the, some of the top news in the tech space that I think would be helpful to understand. Especially this week is really about digital identity and also how but there's a lot of controversy surrounding that subject when innovation comes, right? So from digital identity to proof of human humanity, there's always something new and exciting happening in this world of technology. And so we will continue to keep you updated on the latest development in the, and trends in the field of artificial intelligence and technology. So don't forget to tune in next week for more interesting topics and discussions. And thank you so much for listening to the Magpie Next Weekly Podcast hosted by Tim, available live on LinkedIn audio events and Twitter spaces, and later uploaded to YouTube and Spotify. So have a great weekend, everyone.